Uses of the word sediment date back to the 14th century. Its lengthier derivatives, sentimentality and sentimentalism, acquired special significance for 19th century American writers who use these concepts. So they might figure out the moral significance and social purposes of human emotions. 19th century American novelists like Susan Warner, Marie Susanna Cummins, and Harriet Beecher Stowe considered sentimentality a literary form that was ideally suited both to incite feelings in readers and to direct those feelings toward projects of social betterment. Temperance novels and abolitionist tracts were two of the most prominent of sentimental genres that those writers used to cultivate the sympathy and benevolence of their readers. The most influential sentimental novel, Uncle Tom's Cabin, was written to promote resistance to the enactment of the Fugitive Slave Law. To understand the role sentimentalism played in its production, let's consider the following passage. There is one thing that every individual can do. They can see to it that they feel right. An atmosphere of sympathetic influence encircles every human being. And the man or woman who feels strongly, healthily, and justly on the great interests of humanity is a constant benefactor to the human race. In this passage, Stowe has associated her novel Sentimental Investments with the effort to enlarge the bond of fellow feeling so as to include individuals felt as well as understood to be fully human. Sentimental fiction clearly enjoyed enormous popularity during that antebellum period. However, by the time American literature programs were getting started on U.S. campuses in the 1950s, sentimentality had become a pejorative term. Instructors in close reading, in particular, then characterized sentimentality as a mawkish, simple-minded form of emotional excess brought on by overindulgence in the tender emotions of pathos and sympathy. In her 1985 book, Sensational Designs, The Cultural Work of American Fiction, 1790 to 1860, very scholar Jane Tompkins struggled to reverse the literary establishment's calcified attitude toward sentimental literature with this stinging critique. 20th century critics have taught generations of students to equate popularity with debasement, emotionality with ineffectiveness, religiosity with fakery, domesticity with triviality, and all of these, implicitly, with womanly inferiority. Tompkins argued that sentimentality was a complex rhetorical strategy designed to reorganize United States culture from the woman's point of view. Since the 1960s, critics and literary scholars across the gender divide have followed Tompkins' lead in underscoring the importance of sentimental literature to American cultural studies. But now, at the turn of the 21st century, literary scholars have also expressed some concerns about hidden complicities between the universal circle of fellow feelings Stowe celebrated and the construction of racial categories that serve the interests of imperial rule. Apropos such concerns, African-American scholar Sadia Hartman has recently asked whether the empathy that white 19th century sentimental writers purported to feel for the slaves' suffering bodies might not in fact have figured a way for them to feel good about themselves rather than for those whom this exercise in imagination presumably is designed to reach. But what do you think? The sentimental literature continue to play a crucial role in the promotion of projects of social and cultural reform across this planet? Should it?